First of all, my name is Maggie Denning, and I am the coordinator of the Academic Success Programs in the Kelly Center. And I'm uh, the person that you would come talk to if you were wanting to get maybe some little more help on uh, college level study skills, if you're wanting some help with time management, test anxiety, things like that. I'm also in charge of the uh, tutoring program, the peer tutoring program. And Casey and Kristen are both tutors in that program. Uh, we tutor most of the general education courses, and we do it by appointment in the Kelly Center, which means you have 45 minutes of their undivided attention to help you. They're not the teacher. They're just there to kind of help you, maybe if you don't understand a concept. We always encourage you, always, if you don't understand the content in the class, to make an appointment with the professor and sit down and visit with them and see if they can help you figure out what part you're not getting. Uh, a lot of times they will suggest that maybe you get some tutoring to go with that. That's where we come in. The top three things that we tutor, biology, chemistry, and math. So either you're really, really good at that or you sometimes have questions. So those are our top three. Uh, what else? Anything else? Okay. So how many people in here get an extra credit? Raise your hand. Awesomeness. How many just came because they want to learn how to learn? That's awesome, good, okay. Uh, we're gonna shut the door and it's gonna get hot fast. Three things, textbook reading, note taking, and test taking. Those are probably the three key things besides time management that are gonna help you be successful. Next one. Textbook reading. If the book is said required on your syllabus, that means you really should buy the book. Sometimes we'll, I'll hear students say, well, everything I need to know is on the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint a lot of times is just talking points, and so they're explaining to you things that go with that, and you're real busy writing down what's on the PowerPoint, and they're telling you the important things that you really need to know that are gonna be on the test. So if it says required, I encourage you to buy it. And I know they're very, very expensive, so why would you want to carry around $800 worth of books and not open them up, right? Do you guys use your textbooks? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, I'm old school, buy the books. Uh, it, it pays to get the syllabus out for every class and really go over it because the syllabus is like a contract between you and the instructor they tell you how many exams there's going to be, kind of what, whether you're required to have a book, if there's an online version to it, what chapters they're going to lecture over. Everything you need to know what their grading scale is, is listed on there. And so you need to know that so that there's no surprises in the middle of the semester. I'd keep it with me with my notebook all the time so I knew what was coming up. Um, when you're doing textbook reading, it kind of pays to look it over first. The table of contents would be the first place that I would look to see what, what are we going to be talking about in chapter one. And what that does is kind of give you an overview of what you're going to be reading about. And then look at the keywords and the key terms and see if you, do you know something about that? Because we know a little bit about a lot of stuff, but we have to connect it to something to be able to remember it. And if it's in bold, you probably are going to need to know what that word means, and if you see it in a sense and sentence, uh, how it can help you be able to answer test questions if you just even know the terminology. You guys have something? Whoa. You guys got something to say? I'm done talking. You got something to say? That's like how I read. Is like I'll start with the heading, and then I'll go, as I'm reading, write down the bold words underneath that heading. Like That's how I read, and that's how I take my notes while I read. So if I want to look at something, I can just go back to my notes. Instead of trying to, you know, get through all the textbooks. <coughs> in order to remember what you read, a lot of times it pays to turn that heading into a question. Either put a who, a what, a when, a why, a where, or a how. And don't go to the next heading until you've answered your question. And for those of you that are hands-on learners, it just makes it feel like you're doing something rather than I just sat down and I read 50 pages and I have no idea what I just read. If there's pictures, charts, figures, tables, look at those because the, 
usually the author has give you information that was so complex that they felt like a visual would help you understand it. When I used to read my textbooks, I just skipped all that. I skipped the headings, I skipped the pictures, the tables, because I had 50 pages to read. And then when I was done, I didn't know what I read. So those are cues to what you need to know. If there's a summary, look at it and see what, is the, what does the author think is important in this chapter that I ought to know. Does this sound like something that I've heard in the classroom, is the instructor talking about in the classroom? Do I understand how it works? That textbook can be your friend, and a lot of times you really don't need it other than for clarification. You get most of it in class, but the textbook's gonna, you can go back and look at it and it'll clarify something you don't understand. Is this the next one? Yeah. All right. Okay, the extra stuff to me, some of the most important part. You need to set a goal. How many of you have a goal for this semester? Okay. How many of you have it written down? If you write a goal down your, and you look at it every day, you're more apt to achieve it than if it's just rolling around in your head. Um, if you were a C student in, in high school and you came here and you said, you know what, I'm gonna make all A's, that's my goal. That's setting the bar a little higher than you did in high school, so my suggestion would be a C in high school is probably a D in college as far as the effort. Would you guys say that's about right? So. If you weren't the best student, you might have to practice to become the best student, so don't set the goal so high that you can't achieve it. <coughs> Attitude, yeah. If you don't wanna be here, if you don't wanna be here right now, it's really hard to do this because college is really hard. It's a lot of fun. Is anybody enjoying college? Got people in the back that are, yeah. I mean, it's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to have balance though, fun and studying. Sometimes this one comes up over here too much and sometimes this one does, so try to get a balance. Uh, class attendance, there's always something that goes on in class when you miss it. Has anybody noticed that? They tell you something, they give you a date, they give you some information that's not in the book, it's not any place that you can find it. Uh, I teach a succeeding in college class and we have it set up in that class that if you don't go, you're probably gonna miss something that's worth about 30 or 40 points just so you get in, in the habit of going to class. You gotta wanna learn. You have to have that, that drive of, I wanna learn how this works, I wanna know what, what am I learning from this class, what am I getting for my money? Because you paid a lot of money for the classes. So you have to have the desire, okay. Stay on top, manage your time. How do you girls manage your time? Do you well? what? I don't know. I like to manage like what I have to do during the day. I just use a planner. Like with you have on there, use a planner. It's really important for me to remember deadlines and stuff. How many of you have a planner? Awesome, because you cannot remember everything in high school. There's just high school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember much from high school because it was so much fun. <laughs> which really did not make me very successful as a college student. But uh, there's too much. There's way too many things and things are due and Instructors do not accept late work in, high, in college. They do in high school, you can usually talk them into something. It's really hard to get something done <coughs> late in college. Stress and anxiety, managing that. What kind of things do you do to manage your stress? Anybody, healthy, yes? Exercise. Exercise, okay. Somebody else? Nobody, do. anybody run? Okay, anybody sleep? Yes. Talk to a friend. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are back there going, you have a lot of stress? <laughs> Anything else? What do you do? Read a book? Play games. Play games? What else? Cry. Spend time with friends? Cry. Do what? Cry. Cry? <laughs> I had that last night too, cry. You know what? Crying's good for you. It really is, just if you don't want to cry all the time. Oh but <laughs> but some, laughing and crying, and everybody kind of got a laugh a little bit ago, and that's really good because you really do have to laugh every day. This is really, really hard, but sometimes you just got to cry. Sometimes stuff's so complicated that you just got to cry, and then all of a sudden it just clears up and you can, you can remember what you're supposed to be. Has that ever happened to you? 
Uh-huh. I cried all the time during college algebra. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'd be like, why don't I get this? Well, because I didn't like it. It's one of the reasons that I didn't get it. But I cried a lot. Uh, girls like guys that cry just a little bit, but they don't like guys that cry all the time. So if you're a guy and you cry a little bit, girls think that's really neat. But not a ball, baby. Okay, that's a little side thing. That helps manage anxiety. Okay. Uh, yeah, note taking nowadays. Take a picture of it, right? Well, there's a whole bunch of people my age in the classroom are going to go, no, you're not. That's not how you take notes. Uh, I think notes are probably one of the things that can make or break you in college. Do you girls take notes? Do you use your notes? If you go over those notes on the same day that you took the notes, you've got about an 80% chance of remembering what went on in the classroom. This is some psychology. <laughs> they told it to me, so I believe it. Okay. Uh, they say if you wait another day, it's about 60%. Then it goes to 40, 25, and 10. And if you wait till just a couple days before the test, if you didn't already know something about it, you almost have to relearn it. So it's kind of a good idea just to go over your notes and fill them in, maybe get the book out and clarify. If there's something that you didn't understand, so the next class period, you can go in and talk to the professor either before class, during their office hours, or when they ask, does anybody have a question, raise your hand and say, this is something that I'm, I got this part, but there's something here I'm not seeing. I missed this. Can you help me with it? And they will. Wow, we went through that fast. <coughs> Another thing that you can do with notes, I said they were going to do all the talking and I'm doing all the talking. Uh, when you walk out of the classroom as you're shutting up your book and you're going out, what do you usually think about? The next class. The next class. What else? Thank God. What else? I have homework for that class. Pardon? Do you have like homework for that class? I got homework I got to get done. I don't know when I'm going to get it done. I need to get to work. I need to call somebody. Right? So you just set through 50 minutes that you just are just dumping right out of short-term memory. So what if you just, as you're putting the stuff away, you think, what was the most important thing that was said today? And what kind of things back that up? What kind of supporting evidence made that the most important? And you studied once walking out of the classroom. <coughs> you guys go over this one. I'm doing that I need mean, anything. <laughs> Like Maggie said, you need to have, you know, keep a good attitude while you're in college, otherwise it's going to be really hard. And that includes, you know, being open-minded, keeping a positive attitude. You know, don't give up, even if, you know, if, you know, like everyone says, don't give up even if things get hard. That is true. You can usually find someone to help you work through things, especially at the Kelly Center. <laughs> We're going to do commercials for this. I'd like to snuck one of those in there real fast. It's important to do what? <laughs> I'm not going to show you my commercial. It is important to you know step back and take a break, and ninety percent of life is showing up. So go to class, you know, just be here, be present. Does anybody have a question so far? Are we doing that good a job? We're incredible, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Have you seen the emphasis on go to class? Go. Right? <laughs> I teach a class that the whole theory is go to class, do the work, and you will pass. And that it sounds simple, but it's that middle thing. It's doing the work. Sometimes that kind of gets in the way. But once you get used to it and you start studying smarter, it's easy. A lot of times when no one shows up for class, instructors will go ahead and give like a really easy quiz or they might just say, put your name on a piece of paper and you're going to get five extra points. <coughs> happens a lot. Do it. So both of those have happened for me. Tell them that because I need to go get you something to drink. <laughs> I've never had to stop and nail the film thing to go get something to drink. Is there a water fountain? There's right. an ice machine. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> They're going to talk. But they know this because they put it together. So, pretty much go to class. But, like I said, I had both of those instances that Maggie was saying happened to me. There was one class where 
it was a Friday morning and there was only like 10 kids there, maybe 15, and like a teacher passed around a piece of paper and was like, write your name down, you get extra credit for being here. And I'm like, yes! Um, and then the other one was like, sometimes they'll give easy quizzes. And by easy quizzes, it's like, what, what color, color of shirt did I wear today? And only if you were there would you know that. And so um, that's good uh, motivation to go to class sometimes, even when you don't want to. Uh, another thing is to sit in the T. Have you guys heard that? No. No? Okay. So imagine a classroom, you know, you have rows of desks. So the T is the first row and then the middle row back. So just like the T. For me, it would be like a backwards T. So it would be like front row, middle row. So like the T, you're more apt to pay attention if you're in the front row. Because I mean, you have to look directly at the teacher. No one else is in front of you distracting you. No one is sitting in front of you on their computer on Facebook. Um, so you pay attention better, so you take better notes, and you'll get more out of the class in the long run if you sit in the tea. I found that that helps me a lot. Either that or I'll sit in like the second row, so I'm not right in the front sometimes, but uh, yeah. So take notes, like I said. Oh, take notes that you'll be able to understand. So I had some, I've had people come in and say, well, I mean, I wrote things down, but I don't remember what they mean. And so, one, going over the notes after the class helps the same day, and also just maybe make a side note of something that the teacher said that might help you remember, like the keyword that you can look up in the book later um, that can help you remember what you, or why you wrote it down. If you're not a good speller and you're taking notes and you're spending all your time trying to spell a word right, it doesn't matter. If you know what that word is and you look at it within the same day, you'll be able to put the right word in there. I wasn't a good speller and I used to do that and it takes up a lot of time. Those are your notes. So it doesn't matter whether you spell it wrong or not. That's not that important. Did you get the concept down? Um, just some effective studying techniques. Do things that um, will actually help you remember. Things like, you know, practice tests, especially if you get, like, test anxiety. You know, just <coughs> having that kind of environment. You <coughs> set a timer and you work this in a certain amount of time can really help. Flashcards, the repetition can help. Um, never work a problem once and put it away. Um, you wouldn't expect to sing a song once and know all the words to that song, right? It's the same thing. So if you want to fully understand something, you need to do it or you know work it multiple times so that the solution flows like it would if you were singing a song. So that's the difference between high school and college also is in high school you memorized it. You just had to memorize it and it usually showed up on a test just like it was on the study guide. In college you have to know how it works, why it works, understand what's going on with it. Can you apply it? And that's where that extra time and making it sound like a song. This is just um, basically what Maggie said. You know, understanding alone is not enough in college. Um, practice and repetition, like the practice test and flashcards, will help you, you know, truly understand what you're learning. Minimum of two hours for every hour you're in the classroom is <coughs> So if you're in 12 hours, you're looking at least 24 hours of studying. Is that something that's happening? Should be. Okay. <laughs> I just kind of put a word a line through boring gen ed classes since this is online. <laughs> Sometimes we do think, how many of you love gen ed classes? Wow, no hands went up. Depend on the class. Way back. <laughs> well, it, 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 it might depend on the class or the instructor, and you might be surprised. Do you like some of yours? I like one. Okay. Biology. Were you surprised that you liked it? I was a, a home ec major, and I loved world geography, or U.S. geography, and don't ask me why. I just thought that was really neat. I, I don't know where that came from. That was, that was a class I really, <laughs> really liked. So they're also set there so that maybe what you think you want to be, you get a little bit of everything so that you have a foundation of a lot of stuff from a liberal arts college, but also something may spark your interest in something you never thought about before. And that's one of the reasons you take those. Okay, you want to talk about them more? How do I do it? 
just when you're in a class, you know, think not only the small details, but how they relate to the big picture, you know? Apply and relate new ideas to things that you already know. Like maybe, you, you know, your major or something. Something that's in your major, you can apply something you learn in your gen ed class to that. <coughs> Problems with procrastination. Anybody do that? <laughs> okay. The it, best, go ahead because this is really. The best thing um, that they say you're supposed to do is, you know, turn your attention away. It's it's hard to do something that you don't want to do. You know, we all know that. And but if you do this too much, you know, you get sucked into the internet, and it can turn <laughs> into like an addiction. So um, a good technique that really works, if you have like a long list of things that you need to do and it's varied, is that you set a timer for 25 minutes and you turn everything else off that you don't need, like your cell phone or things that will distract you, and you work on that. And then after that time is up, you'll take a five minute break and you do, you know, whatever you wanna do that's not, you know, on your list. And, and then after that, you just do a repetition. And after four repetitions, you reward yourself with a 15 to 20 minute break. It's really hard to super, super concentrate for longer than 20 to 25 minutes, right? Especially if you're learning all brand new information. So give yourself a five minute break. What, what would you do for a five minute break? If you turned your phone off, you weren't looking at Facebook, you weren't eating, what would you do for five minutes after you really studied hard on one subject? Turn the phone on and look and see if anybody texts you. Check Facebook out and see what happened in the last 20 minutes. Make a quick phone call, go get something to eat. It's a reward and then you feel better about doing it. <coughs> so how am I gonna turn my worst traits into my best traits, Casey? Um, if you have, you know, poor working memory and you feel like you don't, you go to class but you don't remember anything afterwards, or you have a, you know, a hard time paying attention in class, um, this just might mean that you're creative, you don't think, you know, or you don't think like others do, you know, other ideas, why you're, why you're learning are working their way in, which can distract you. Um, if you think that you're, you know, a slow learner compared to other people in the class, um, just think of it as like hiking versus driving. You know, hiking is slower, but you get to enjoy the view and, you know, the scenery. And, and driving, you, you go past all that real fast. So if you're a slow learner, you might have deeper, more profound experiences. And you may have to work harder, but in the end, you'll really know what you're learning. If you spend a lot of time with something and you really struggle learning it, chances are you're going to remember that for a long time. And if it comes real easy, it's just kind of going to get dumped. So when you really work hard, a lot of times that does happen. What Something I learned today, I went to a meeting and they were talking about people that have learning disabilities or if they have attention deficit, which I know I have. Uh, I like this part too. Everything we want to know about and we, everything distracts us. And so like if I'm listening to a lecture and somebody walks by that door, I'm going to look at that, I'm going to see what you're doing, I want to see what you're doing back there. Yeah, it's hard to get back in. and so. You just have to make yourself aware if that happens to you. I need to listen to this. I got to hyper focus. I really got to pay attention to this. Where did my mind go? Just write it down on a piece of paper. Okay, I just went and looked outside because somebody walked by. Or, wow, that's a really cute blouse. I wonder where they got it. I'm going to ask them. Did I say, is it called a blouse still today? I, oh, I'm having a little trouble with the terminology for nowadays. You know, <laughs> yeah. But, you need to know where your mind went so maybe you can bring that distraction maybe away from you so that you know, I've got, I've got to listen, I'm in this class, I paid for it, I gotta pay attention. Pay attention where your mind is going. <laughs> That's my thing. So, questions so far. How, how do you read textbook notes? What do you do, to re excuse me, textbooks. What's the most important thing to do with the textbook? Buy it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what else? Look at the words. Look at the bold words. Is that my phone ringing? <laughs> Holy Toledo. I thought I turned it off. It sure is. I'm calling someone. <laughs> Who am I calling? <laughs> oh, God. I thought I had it off. Oh, yes. This is great. 
I am not winning this one. Please do not write that on my back. Oh, Lord. I'm not having a good day. Is anybody else having one of those? I'm avoiding the questions. <laughs> okay, we got the textbook reading. What about the note taking? Take notes so you understand them. Go over them. Exactly on the same day. You know, if you have an hour in between, where do you usually go? <coughs> Starbucks? To where? To the lobby? Uh, yeah. So just go over them a little bit. What was the other one? Folded words, okay. Do those. Class attendance. Always, always, always go to class, right? We had, we said that on almost every slide. How many of you got the big semester at a glance that we give out? Okay. I did bring some extra ones back here, and what's really nice about those is you can mark off on those, like if you miss class. Oh. Every semester we have these at the Kelly Center. And you don't have to see anybody to pick them up. They're in the office, uh, the lobby yeah. office. You can put on here when you're missing class, and you can see if maybe there's a pattern. Maybe you go home on weekends and you don't end up going to class on Monday, or maybe you skip on Friday. You know, just try to figure out if I am missing class, when's it happening? So you can see if there's a pattern. <clears throat> some people might go out on Wednesday night, might miss some classes on Thursday, but at least you would know what you've missed and what you haven't. And this is also good for keeping track of all your quizzes and all your grades you're getting in your class, so you kind of have a big picture of how you're doing in the classes. And, and plus, you can put down here and you'll know exactly when you're leaving. You know when your last final is if you look through your syllabi. You can see when the last day of this semester is in. The fourth week, the eighth week, and the twelfth week are weeks when students usually get sick. They get stressed because that's usually when we have tests due projects are due, papers are due. So if you feel yourself getting stressed, you might look and see, is it the fourth week, the eighth week, or the twelfth week? And chances are it is right through there. Uh, that's when time management comes in. You have to have good time management skills. Yes, we are already halfway through the third week of school. So next week is week four. How many of you have tests this week or some next week? <laughs> See? So once you figure that out, you can kind of plan for it. You know, you know that's going to come up, so you can plan. The eighth week is when they put those midterm grades in, so chances are you're going to have a test around there so you have a grade. So just make plans for that, and don't make big plans of being gone or anything if you know you have projects. Okay. These are some of the things that we do at the Kelly Center. We also have brochures back there on the table. I have some to-do lists if you want them. I have these neat little things from Bob Duffy that go on the back of your phone that you can put your ID in. And after a while, the stuff comes off the back, but you can use those. But anything that you want back there that you'd like to pick up, you can have. I'm going to ask you to fill out the workshop thing. And how many of you are using this for extra credit for more than one class? Nobody. OK, that's good. All right. <coughs> Huh? Yeah, the next one is next Wednesday, and it's keep calm and pass the test in this room. If you don't have any questions, we are done, and you can have one of these. I'm going to ask you when you get it to put your name in here, because if you hand this into your instructor and your name is in here, you're probably not going to get the extra credit. So, what? Okay, so thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoyed the